say we travel from one country to another, if you come from America to Australia, we have a jet lag. So our body and our biological cycle perform according to American time, whereas we are in Australian time. And then our body needs to adjust. Otherwise, we stay biologically in the past while physically we are here. It doesn't work properly. So similarly, what can happen at a physical level also happens to us at a psychological or emotional level. All of us, when we go through life's journey, at that time, we get certain experiences which cause certain impressions on us. And those impressions can be of two kinds. One is good or positive and the other is bad or negative. So we all may get some, go through some grief, some heartbreak, some loss. And this, some victimization, some injustice, and all this impresses itself on our mind. And then it becomes like a horror story that, keep, that keeps replaying. Normally, if we are watching a movie and if we find some scene that is too ghastly, too explicit, too distasteful for us, we will just fast forward it. But with respect to our mind, when it starts displaying some distressing scenes, there is practically no button to fast forward it. Leave alone fast forward it, the mind keeps replaying it. Now, why did he do like that? How could she have spoken like that? Why did this have to happen? And life can victimize us in many different ways. So when this past keeps coming back to us, oh, this happened, this happened, this happened. And that can prevent us from moving forwards in our life. So the negative traumatic experiences from our past can hold us back. They prevent us from experiencing life in the present. And they prevent us from developing our potential for the future. The other aspect is, from the past, we may get some cravings, some experiences which might have been good or enjoyable in a superficial way, and they keep coming back to us. So for example, if somebody becomes an addict of something, then for them, if they become sober, still their past keeps coming back to them. They keep having that desire again and again. Oscar Wilde is ascribed to have said that giving up smoking is the easiest thing in the world. I have done it over a hundred times. <laughs> <laughs> so I gave it up, but it didn't give me up. So the, sometimes our past cravings, which we now understand are unhealthy, they keep coming to us. So in this sense, our past can haunt us. Just like some people in some movies are shown to be haunted by a ghost. They don't want, but that ghost comes and makes them behave in weird ways. Makes them go through all kinds of terrible emotions. So similarly, our past keeps coming back on us. And in a sense, the further we grow in life, the bigger becomes our past. And although we always have a life ahead of us, but unless we process the past properly, the past can either become a burden which crushes us or it can be, it can become a part of the wisdom that empowers us. In one sense, the <clears throat> past is like a resource. But you know, if I am carrying a suitcase, and if I'm traveling and carrying a suitcase and that contains stuff which I just don't know how to use, but I'm told to carry it, then it will simply be a burden. But if that contains stuff which I need and I do use, then that is an asset for me. So the past is like a psychological baggage that all of us have. 
Now we cannot get rid of it, but we can process it so that it doesn't burden us that much. So I was at a mental health care hospital in New Jersey. And I was speaking to the mental health care providers over there. And there they were telling me that one of the biggest problems for people who develop mental health care issues is that they feel life has treated them unfairly. That you know, something terrible happened to them, it shouldn't have happened, and they're just not able to process it. And because of that, they become so traumatized that they can't move forwards. And what is required for them to move ahead in life is to discover some purpose for life.